among the cell wall of the various organisms which we have seen in the previous lecture first one we will look at into the cell wall of plant system this is a plant leaf okay so the plant leaf showing a inner section in which you can able to see the yellow colored things that are all referring to the cell walls of the plant system so these cell walls are made up of cellulose microfibril this is the way in which it will be arranged there in the cell wall in turn this microfibrils are made up of several cellulose molecule that is several cellulose molecule are associating together to form into a microfibril thus the microfibril forms the important unit there to make about there in the cell wall so if you look at closely on the cellulose molecule you can able to see the arrangement of the cellulose molecules there okay so the cellulose molecules are in turn made up of beta glucose so this is the difference there between alpha glucose and beta glucose beta glucose is the one which makes about the cell wall of the plant system however the alpha glucose is the one which makes about the starch structure or the storage of the food structure there in the plant system so this is the position wise differences of the functional groups between an alpha glucose and a beta glucose so beta glucose is a monomeric structure which forms into repeating unit there in the cellulose molecule they are bonded together by 14 beta glycosidic linkage so this is a type of linkage that links the two glucose molecule there in a cellulose okay so with this we will go into the detail of how they are arranged there so you can able to see in a microfibril one chain of a cellulose molecule this one is a second chain of a cellulose molecule and this one is a third chain of a cellulose molecule so they are bonded together by a beta 14 linkage at the same time the adjacent cellulose molecules are bonded there with the help of hydrogen bond that is parallel cellulose molecules are binded or held together with the help of hydrogen bonds there so these are all certain basic details there of the cellulose molecule look at this diagram a plant cell wall showing the different components that have been present there in a plant cell you can able to find all these constituents if you look at there the soluble portion that is present a huge amount is protein the next one is a cellulose molecule which are present to here higher amount there on the cell walls of the plant system that is cellulose and hemicellulose compose of the largest unit one thing that is very tough to be degraded and present there in the plant system is a lignin this is the way in which they have been structured there in the plant you can able to see the cellulose microfibril there they are all united there with the other copolymers that includes hemicellulose lignin and pectin molecules they are all bonded together and that gives a complete strength there for the cell wall the plant cell wall is complex in nature it can be differentiated into the following structure that is middle lamella primary cell wall secondary cell wall and tertiary cell wall so now you can able to look at the various structures i have listed here outermost thing is the middle lamella inside that you can able to see the primary wall then secondary then the inner wall so this is the way in which the plant cell wall is arranged technically speaking in plants a secondary cell wall is thicker and it is an additional layer composed of cellulose and it increases the cell walls rigidity sometimes certain additional layers may also be formed which found to contain the lignin which are present there in the xylem cell walls sometime they may contain suberin that are commonly present in the cork cell walls these compounds are those that provides a rigidity and waterproof condition there for the cell wall which in turn makes the secondary wall a stiff constituent there in the cellulose molecule 
both wood as well as bark cells of the trees will have more amount of secondary cell walls now we look at into the explanation portion for the various layers that have been present there that is from middle lamella to a tertiary cell wall middle lamella is a thin layer that is present between two adjacent cells it is composed of calcium and magnesium pectate it is formed soon after the cell division that is immediately after cell division the first one formed is a middle lamella it can be dissolved by strong acids when you apply a strong acid the middle lamella will be completely dissolved middle lamella is common to two adjacent cell and it holds the cells together the next one is a primary cell wall it is referred as a true cell wall which is found in all the cells of the plants it is commonly found there in the growing cells as a outermost layer of the cell and they are all present there in the immature meristematic as well as parenchymatous cells as a only cell wall component what is mean by here only cell wall it don't have a secondary cell wall that is this meristematic as well as parenchymatous cells will be dominantly having only the primary cell wall it is comparatively thin and permeable it consists of loose network of cellulose microfibrils which we have already seen there in the diagram with a gelatinous hemicellulose matrix certain epidermal cells of the leaf and stem are also found to possess other substances there with the cell wall that is with the primary cell wall which includes cutin and suberin that is some kind of waxes that are added there into the primary cell wall this makes this particular cell wall as a impermeable the next one is secondary cell wall the primary cell wall is followed by secondary cell wall it is found in mature and non growing cells mainly present in more amount there in the trees the secondary cell wall is the one which gives more thickness and rigidity there for the cell it is less permeable chemically secondary cell wall is composed of compactly arranged macrofibrils that are made up of cellulose in between sometime there occurs other molecules which give strength there for the secondary cell wall such as a lignin secondary cell wall is about 5 to 10 micrometer in thickness and it gives rigidity and provides a great strength there for the cell the last one is a tertiary cell wall it is present only in certain plants and they are found just beneath to the secondary cell wall besides cellulose sometimes the tertiary cell wall will be loaded there or associated there with the xylene one of the important polymeric substances that are present in the leaves next we look at into the functions of the cell wall for the plant system the first and foremost function which is common there for the bacteria or a plant or for a fungal cell is the providence of a mechanical support there for the cells the next point it it protects the subsequent membrane that have been present there in the cell that is plasma membrane protection of the plasma membrane is the next function the third one as we have seen there in the bacterial example it determines the cells shape there in the plant cell next one it protects the cell against osmotic pressure that will be exerted there by the cellular constituents cells will have a lot of water there they will automatically will have a high osmotic pressure that may able to make the cell bursting that could be prevented there by the presence of a cell wall the next one it helps in translocation of water and other substances through the xylem phloem as well as the tracheids the next one it plays important role there in the cell expansion that is further growth of the cell and expansion it plays a role and it's a site for several enzymatic activities cell wall is a place in which lot of enzymatic activities will be going on cutin and suberin are some other substances that would be again adding there to the cell wall which in turn preventing the evaporation losses that may be caused there on the surface of the leaf the final point is the cell wall serves as a shield and protects against the attack of various pathogens there on the plant next we look at into 
certain structures that have been associated there with the cell walls. One is a plasma desmeter. Plasma desmeter refers to some narrow channels of cytoplasm that have been interconnecting the adjacent cells. Every living cell in a higher plant is connected to its living neighbors. That is one cell is connected with the nearby cell by fine cytoplasmic channel that are referred as a plasma desma. So you can able to see the plasma desma channels here that have been interconnecting the adjacent cells. So it passes through the intervening cell walls that is with the adjacent cells. The plasma membrane of one cell is continuous with that of its neighbor cell with the help of plasma desma. Plasma desma is a roughly cylindrical membrane lined channel which is having a diameter of around 20 to 40 nanometer. The next one that is important there commonly seen in the cell walls is cell coat. The plasma membrane here is surrounded and protected by some structures called as a cell coat. The cell coat are basically made up of glycocalyx that is certain sugar units that are composed of glycoproteins and certain polysaccharides were united together and they have been formed into a glycocalyx coat which in turn forms a cell coat. So these structures can be successfully stained by using Alician blue and they can be viewed there on the light microscope. Then we look at the functions of the cell coat. It provides support and protection there to the plasma membrane or cell membrane. It affects the concentration of different substances on cell surface and acts as a diffusion barrier for the substances. It also helps in recognizing other cells during the time of tissue formation. 